Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osaiwa Vesali, you can see I'm so excited. We have Glory in the building. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mama. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. What can I say? It is well, it I is mean, well, yeah. it is well. How are you? How have you been? How's work? Work has been hectic. I can't see Right. You know, you know their body, you know their flesh before they they now want to just you know finish the flesh of your body. It's been something else, just trying to catch up. You know, I was away from work for a while, then okay. coming back, just trying to catch up. So many, so many so I'm just seeing patterns and things flying up and down. Oh, wow. and giving, I was like, Okay. Wow. But this should give you um what's it called? Um a signal to have somebody shadow you. So even if it's as a as a as a lower pay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do have someone, but there are, obviously there are some things which I yeah. just have that needs me around. But either ways, I thank God everything, we're, we're fighting it and we are hanging in there and just doing it. It is well, it is well, you'll be mm. fine, you'll be fine. I think God will give you the strength beyond what you would imagine. You'll yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> D, how are you? Angry. What happened? Oh, the way huh. and Lagos and the madness. Did you see Ikeja Jerry? My sister sent me a video of Ikeja Jerry. If you see the flood in Ikeja Jerry, I could not yeah. believe it. But oh, why is rain falling in November? I beg you. It's, it's climate change. I mean, the weather has changed all over the world. So, so when we say climate yeah. change, change. People don't, yeah, understand, people don't understand the ramification. Yeah. People yeah. with this one that they're seeing, they're mm -hmm. still feeling like, mm, so mm -hmm. mm. it is well. <laughs> All right, so today in partnership with Enough is Enough, we will be discussing Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi Gubar elections. Uh, so I don't know where we started from. Ah, <laughs> the very beginning. Yeah. Ah, so I think you guys should start from on my behalf, please. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, um... This is our regular partnership um, in order to educate, enlighten, and empower the public about, you know, their role in government and um, in moving Nigeria forward. So, um, like you said, this is about Bayosa, Imo, and Kogi gubernatorial um, elections. And um, so elections are the foundation of democratic governance. And um, as they promote political accountability, citizens' participation, and give voice and power to the people. The elections in Bayosa, Imo, and Kogi are off-cycle elections, deviating from the regular electoral cycle of general elections Absolutely. in March. So what is the role, what, what are the roles of um, the, governors. the governors? So the chief executives of um, the states are responsible for state administration, law enforcement, and implementation of state laws. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, what are the challenges that, um, you know, voters that um, mitigate against voters' participation? We have corruption. We have limited voters' um, education. We have voter apathy. And we have instances of violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's quickly do um, like a comparison of um, 2019 versus um, 2023. So um, in 2019, now this is about um, Bielsa. In 2019, there were 922, 562 registered voters as co um, compared to 2023 that gives a record of 1,050, 1,056,000. Yeah, 1,862. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. Um, and then there was um, 146, 999 voters, um, votes that were cast compared to 2023, which has 1,009,895. Oh, sorry, 800, yeah, 800, mm -hmm. no, I beg your pardon. That is um, 1,009,895 is the record for collected PVCs in 2023. We do not have a record for 2019. Now, um, in 2019, um, we have... Um, oh, sorry, again. I don't, I don't even think they put the votes cast for um, 2023 
for Bielsa. That's what we, that's where you're no, they on. didn't exactly. Mm. This is just going to be a, a you know a new. Well, you can election. see the numbers. Yes, yeah, I wish they could project it. Are getting involved in, in uh, political in cycles. Politica, yes. Yeah. Which is, I mean, Kogi looks really thing. interesting as well. Because yeah. the, the margin for Kogi is quite close. And um, Imo State as well. Mm. Imo was 2.2 registered voters mm. in 2019. And 2023, you had about 2.4 registered Four. voters. So it gives us a bit of, you know, clarity. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Gloria, you want to come in? Yeah, for Kogi, we had um, about last 2019, about 1,646,000. 350 registered voters as against 2023 in which we have about 1.9 so about 300,000 different but mm -hmm. that's like close yeah sort of and we have uh, for for the collected pvcs you can see we have about 1.8 there is no record for 2019 but if you look at the figure 1.8 that shows how people are interested in this absolutely yeah election. compared to the register yeah. the number of people who have yeah. collected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and we have for on collected views that's hundred. So we have for accredited voters for twenty nineteen that's could be still six hundred and thirty six and we have vote, voters casted for twenty nineteen that's six hundred and twenty four. So we're just going to watch and see um the votes being casted this for this current election. Mm -hmm. So what are the key actions for citizens? So what um should be expected of you, what's your civic responsibility towards this current election? We expect you to um, register. register to vote, um, select credible candidates, do not get, do not be biased in your choices, you know, look for who the people you believe can cause a change in your various states, and vote, not fight, please, vote, do not fight, mm -hmm. I say vote, do not fight, and protect your vote on election day. Absolutely, and keep them accountable, <laughs> so for um, the Bayasa Ima and Kogi state, just, um, Five days left, so the yeah. governorship elections would happen November 11, 2023. So remember that this, uh, um, the Office of the Citizen, right, chat box, you just say hello on WhatsApp 017006381. You get to know your elected officials, your governors, senators, House of Rep members, State House of Assembly members, local government, chairmen, and councillors. So, I mean, for those in Emo, um, Kogi and Bielsa, I'm wishing you guys good luck, like um, um, Gloria mm -hmm. mentioned, RSVP, register yeah. to vote, select credible candidate, make sure you read their manifesto, mm. and watch out, see what is happening in the house, mm -hmm. when they buy one or 60 million card, because we just, pa, 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 don't do that, read about yeah. them, learn, cause votes, do not be violent, don't fight, and protect your votes on election day, stay there, and keep holding them accountable, count your votes, live on on a, at the polling unit. All right, so today we want to discuss this our budget. <laughs> we will not let it go. <laughs> and um, here's what we found in today's quote. It says, Abuja cannot pay its bills. We have to get to serious work. Abuja, as it is today, is choking. This was from Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo, the former Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, so the former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria. So as I mentioned earlier, Last week, the president presented a supplementary budget of two trillion that came with controversial line items such as the presidential yacht, which are here they have taken delivery of, even though they say that they did not buy it, so we don't know what to believe. The purchase of vehicles worth 1.5 billion naira, as well as a hundred billion naira, allocated to the FCT. Now, these elicited angry reactions from Nigeria which led to dropping the yacht and increasing the student loan uh, section to about 10 billion. That story is still a bit sketchy. However, other lineups remain, that, um, remain and today we're, of course, we're joined by Kemeset, who will join us much later to discuss the FCT cut of the budget. And we're asking, in the largest sense, what can 100 billion do for Nigeria's economy? You know, that $100 billion that has been allocated to the FCT, what can it do for the Nigerian economy? But first, let's quickly go on a break. When we come back from that break, we want to see what we found in today's news. All right, thanks for staying with us now. International Day for Prevention or preventing, rather, the exploitation of the environment in war and armed conflict is observed annually on November 6th to raise awareness about the devastating impact of war and armed conflict on the environment. 
This day also serves as a reminder of the importance of protecting the environment during times of conflict. Very, very important day. I hope they keep to, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, sometimes there are all these treaties, there are all these like silent rules that you can't go there, you can't go there. Even in the midst of war, there are some things you're supposed to just preserve. Yeah. So I hope, I hope it is followed through, but it's an important day. All right, so D, what did you find for us in today's news? Okay, so this one is alarming for me because um, it says um, cooking gas um, scarcity hits Lagos, Kano, Katsina, and other states. Um, um, so up until a couple of months ago, I know the 12.5 kg gas was about, it was going for like 9,000. Then it jumped to like about 10,000. And then now it's 14,000 plus. That's even if you say, you know. So um, I was very interested in that because, um, I mean, um, gas is, is, I mean, most of the cities in Nigeria are quite urban. So you would expect that a lot of people are using gas in homes and, you know, all that. And so um, there is a report that says that, um, you know, the Nigerian liquefied natural gas, you know, um, made available about 20 million, 20 metric tons of cooking gas mm. for, you know, a price. And um, it's actually baffled as to why there is, um, you know, this scarcity. So for me, I don't know if it is artificial or just, you know, in terms of speculation, because they probably feel there's one policy coming on or just the law of markets, you know, but... Either way, I know that Nigerians also were very, hmm. we take things like this very literally, you know, we try to say that, okay, you know what, because there's going to be a scarcity or there is a scarcity, you think this is the time to buy gas and keep at home. That's dangerous because this is very hot season. Or oh, is it the end of year effect? You know, when it's Again, very season, possible. <laughs> Very people possible. Should, people should not remind me of my misery. You know, for so me, I'm I in the middle of a project, yeah. right? And <laughs> hey, Father Lord, if I that's this, this was giving me sleepless nights. When I finish like this, mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep. Literally, like every day, you call your suppliers for this. It's the, the prices price change. change. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you won't blame them. Even me, you are talking about a story. I'm going to go and store because I need to buy at least three, uh, what's it called, uh, cylinders mm. and fill them up, you know, mm. in prep preparation for the... You just have to. They just really take... For, no, I mean, for me, I get that. That's, our, that's the way we do things because we understand that this is Nigeria. But I would just say that let us also take safety measures. That's all you can say. That, that, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Glory, how, how about you? Um, mine is about um, Mr. Ebu. So reports coming on today said he got one of his legs amputated. And I decided to take this story because um, I know all about um, taking care of someone with a terminal disease. I know when this story came out where he was requesting or his family was requesting for assistance and I told him about that. He's rich. Why is he asking for that? If it's someone that's gone through that, you know, you know, there comes a point where it's almost like no amount of money is enough because there are some diseases where like you just keep spending so all i want to wish um, him quick recovery so from the report it states here as at 1 p.m noon today daddy has gone through su seven successful surgeries but to what? keep him alive and increase his chances of recovery one of his legs had to be amputated this development has been hard on us all but we've, but we've had to accept it as daddy's new reality to keep him alive i just wish him quick recovery. I mean, we've lost a lot of actors and people in the entertainment industry this year. We don't want to lose any more, so he's in our prayers. And I hope... So, so I'm actually really afraid for him. Yeah. yeah. I had um, my stepmom, who was diabetic, and at some point, when it gets to that place, that point where they begin to... Amputate, amputate yeah. You really, it's, it's, it's a it's, yeah. thing, chance. I really pray for him, honestly. Um, so with diabetes, I have people that are living with diabetes around me and I know that there's some level of, um, what's the word, non-discipline that comes with that. So there are some illnesses that you can just live your life. You can manage it, so yeah. With diabetes specifically, there's a lot of discipline that goes with diabetic um, management, right? Um, so when, when it gets to that point where your legs, you know, are being amputated, um, it means that you have really, really gone to the critical uh, stage of diabetes. So, 
um, it's now a 50-50 thing. You really must pray. Because, I mean, I've heard so many stories of people that by the time they did that, you know, in a few months, you know, mm -hmm. something happened. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I just pray that would not be his own situation because he's quite on the big side. Yeah. So even outside of this um, amputation, there has to be a lot of psychotherapy. Because first of all, he's in the limelight. Mm -hmm. He's a celebrity. You know, he's lived his life. He's done a lot of things. You know, now coming to the reality of wanting to—I mean, now using one leg. Um, so there will be a lot of depression. There will be yeah. a lot of fighting. There will be a lot of things that would go with that. So um, the funding is not just money they need. They need. They need a lot of partnership. So if, they, if this is the time, start reaching out to all the psychotherapists they know. I mean, the good others, um, physiotherapists, psychotherapists, all of those mental people, health specialists. Mental health specialists. This is the time because if the amputation does not kill you, depression, do you understand? So there are so many things I need to battle. Then again, he needs to then speak to someone that is a nutritionist and that is also, you know, like a fitness coach. Because you see, by the time also with, with diabetes, your weight also helps. If you if you you are able to at least keep your weight under a certain yeah it helps so I'm just praying and I'm wishing him you know speedy recovery and I'm hoping that he will come out of this stronger and better. Mm -hmm. right, on that note, we we'll take a break. When we come back from that break, let's discuss Abuja. Stay with us. We'll be right back.